Got a quick look at some software, Luminar Neo. What I'm going to be doing is taking a look specifically at the features for the full upgrade for 2024. First of which is a new and improved catalog. This was a fairly weak area in the original version. You really didn't have a lot of options here other than going through things like the capture time and date. What they've done now is added some additional filtering options. Some of these are fairly standard such as whether they've been edited or not and there's a star rating system which has been introduced. Now we can also use things such as the camera model that has been added so it's able to search through the EXIF information. We also have some additional options such as the focal length. I would have simplified this a little bit perhaps rounding it up and down. I don't see the need to have quite that many focal lengths. The same applies for the ISO really. I think just full stops would be fine for that. Aperture shutter speed also an option as well as the file format. These filters can help quite a bit but in addition they have also added a function where you can search the catalogue with keywords. For example I've just typed in wedding. Now I know there's a few slides here where there was a wedding, some pictures of that. But it's also added a car. It's not an unreasonable choice because that does look a bit like a wedding car. But as you'll be able to see with some of the other searches that I do, sometimes it does include items which aren't exactly what you want. With the red car, it obviously has picked up the five shots with red cars in, and that's great. But it's also picked up, again, the same car that we just saw. It's also picked up this old slide shot from the Berlin Wall, one of the checkpoints. There's a bit of potential for tweaking and refining this with the developers, but it is at least there and it does give you some help in terms of looking for images. I searched for flowers and that worked fine. This next one is a very important update because they have now added the film strip to the edit section. Prior to this update, there was no way for you to cycle through the images when you went into the edit tab. If you were working on multiple images, that was a bit of a problem in terms of the workflow. In addition to that, they've also added a star rating system so you can go through and rate the images as you want. Prior to this update, it was a real problem because it did really slow down your working and editing time. Now, there are still a couple of things which I would like to see changed in this. For example, you can't change the size of the thumbnails. Another problem that I noticed is when I'm switching between images, then it will shut down the develop module which I have open. Hopefully that's something they'll iron out in a future update or in the final release. This is a beta version that I'm looking at. This next one is called Color Transfer. It allows you to take the tonality of an image and apply it to your own images. The idea with this isn't so much about the composition. It doesn't really make any difference. It's about how the image looks. So feel free to experiment with images which don't look anything at all like the one that you're using but try and think about the actual tones and colours of the picture. I'm just giving you a couple of basic examples here, but any type of image that you like, the look of, you can use. You could download an image that you really like, upload that and then sort of clone the look of it. Maybe you like the colours or the type of contrast that the image has, and you can of course adjust things as you wish. It's a bit like taking a preset from an image or at least something approaching that. Sometimes the effect can be quite interesting and sometimes it can be a bit strange, but there you go. It is something to play around with. This is another handy addition that they have. It's the colour masking and as the name suggests, just a way of masking images and using it purely just on the colour. So in this case, I'm just going to pick a certain part of the flower and you can just click on that. You can adjust the range with the slider so you'll be able to adjust the sensitivity. And then once you've done that, you can apply whatever it is you're using. In this case, I'm using the Enhancement AI tool. Here's an example with the Super Sharp, and you can see it's just only applied that sharpness to that specific area. Here's an example with the daisies, and I'm just using it to select the yellow color. And then in this case, I'm adjusting the saturation to give them a bit more punch. And because it's only affecting the yellows, it isn't boosting the green saturation. There are some improvements in terms of the AI features. I'm not particularly into this sky replacement thing myself. We're wandering a bit into the digital art area here, but if you do like that, it has been improved in terms of the speed and how it delivers the result. There's much less in terms of errors. 
There are quite a lot of tools in this software and it's really difficult to cover it all in a single video. So what I'm gonna do is over a period of time, I'll do some specific videos on certain functions with the software. Some of the AI functions and presets are quite useful, but I'd like to see more emphasis in terms of the editing workflow. There is a link below if you want to try out the software. There's a free trial on it and there is a discount code. If you do like the software and you purchase it, it does help support the channel and that's always appreciated. Anybody that has anything they want to add to this in terms of your overall thoughts with the software or anything that you like or dislike, do drop a comment down below. Look forward to seeing you in a few more videos that I'll be making on this software. And as usual, thanks for watching.